Sometimes you just like a makeup product so much or it ignites your curiosity to such an extent that if you're anything like me, you decide to explore it further and purchase different shades. It's very rare that that happens to me, but it's actually happened quite a bit so frequently in the last month that I actually decided to devote a video to the shade extensions that I have purchased on purchases I've already made. Very rare that I do that, but we're going to look at all of that, especially from Giorgio Armani Beauty, Auric Beauty, and YSL. We're going to do that today with me, Rebecca. I'm not fit for print beauty. I am an over 20 year veteran of the fashion and beauty journalism typed print interviews, stories, all of that stuff. But I have brought not fit for print beauty here to YouTube so that you can have a little filmed live beauty magazine to look at every day or so here on YouTube. All right, let's get started. Let me tell you what I did. I'm on a red lip journey. Um, this is a little orangey red. I'm going to make a video on my red lip era because I'm definitely in my red lip era right now. And um, I have purchased a lot of, I, I got some more Vive to be part of that and some more Pat McGrath. I'll save that for that video. But those are some shade extensions. They could have gone in this video, but I'll save it for the red lip video. Um, and I'm going to focus on three that I've spoken about in the past month where I past week or two really, where I've told you I was really interested in getting more shades on it. One of it was this particular YSL product from the uh, the Inks. This is the YSL Inks Vinyl Cream High Shine Lip Stain. I went ahead and picked it up in Chili Provocation. I had it in the Mauve and the Plum, and I picked it up in this Chili Provocation. I am wearing it now. We will apply it together, and we will talk about how it lasts and all of that stuff. Seven shades total, but this is the most red that they offer. It's $48 each, because it's YSL. Um, and I have been enjoying the Mauve and the Plum a lot. Um, I actually think that the that deepest, I think that's the plum, is still my favorite. But let me just show you. We're going to take this outside into the warm California sunshine. Just really quickly here, I'll just kind of show you the way that it looks. That's Chili Provocation. They have the goofiest names. Chili Provocation. I guess that could be somebody in a, in a restaurant who eats the chili and doesn't have any water. That person's making a Chili Provocation. Maybe that's it. Here was the um, color that I had, the deepest shade that I've really been enjoying. I, that I might enjoy a little more. And interestingly enough, on camera, this one almost red as a red, this kind of plum shade. Um, but I have that review. You can go ahead and find that review where I tried on. We're going to try it on in this video because I liked this shade so much that I went ahead during the Sephora sale and bought this shade. So today's video is going to be about that shade change, okay, that I did. I also want to talk to you about Armani Luminous Silk Aqua Highlighter. Originally, I bought the Luminous Silk Aqua Highlighter in Halo, which is that almost crystal clear icy shade, and Dawn, which is almost like a rose gold, really. And in the video, which you can refer back to, I, I tried this Dawn shade as a bronzer, because after I purchased it, I read that this can also be used as a bronzer. And I have a particular love, I don't know if you do, but check it out if you if you have it. Um, let me put you on this here. With Armani, they do a really, really nice liquid. They do a great liquid blush. They do a great liquid eyeshadow. And I thought, oh, this liquid highlighter, and you can use it as bronzer. I'm missing that. So I went ahead and bought, there's five shades. I went ahead and got the number four sunrise shade. Number five was described as copper, number four as bronze. With my light medium skin, I decided that copper might be too much, so I went with this one today. Let me just show you it. I'll show you it outside soon, but let me just show you this one. And I thought, let's try to bronze with that and see what it does. I know it's a highlighter. By the way, my face is very mismatched because we've got a lot of different products used in different ways. So don't adjust your camera if you're wondering why my makeup looks out of balance. It's, it's because I have so many different products on my face right now in different proportions on different sides. But we're going to try bronzing the, this one today. Maybe I should have gotten the number five copper and you can let me know. But I really enjoyed that halo shade and that dawn shade that I bought. So it prompted me to investigate with this shade. Um, let me know if you're in my coloring or around my coloring and got the dawn shade or let me know if you're deeper and got the number five shade. I should say that copper shade. And let me know if you're deeper skin tone and if you've been, what you've thought of these deeper shades to highlight and maybe to do a little bit of contouring or bronzing. 
I'd love to hear your thoughts. I also uh, purchased the, originally, the Auric Mirage Shift in Daybreak, and I loved it, but I love a good face palette. And this comes in three colorways. I purchased this one, which is a little light and a little cool for me. I love cool tones, but it's true, I don't always look great enough. I had stayed away from the middle palette called High Noon, it looked a little too orange for me. And then there's an even deeper um, shade range, but I went ahead and picked up the High Noon because I like the Daybreak so much. Here it is. This is my original that I'm shaking up and down right now, Daybreak. Here's the new one I just purchased. You can see the difference. And we're going to see it outside in the warm California sunshine. But let me just kind of show you the difference. Here's the bronzer, just for those of you who might be around my skin tone or anywhere light to medium. Here's the bronzer from the new one I just bought called High Noon. Next to, next to the bronzer originally from Daybreak. What a difference. Big difference. Now the blush are going to be ridiculous because the blush in this high noon is going to be completely different from the cooler blush in the daybreak. I don't know if they're even comparable. But what I'm most curious about here is, I'm cleaning, I have a little uh, cloth on my leg. That's what I'm doing, cleaning. Okay, here is the highlight and the balm, okay, from the Mirage Sift High Noon. Highlight and balm. Now, if you're wondering kind of what I'm talking about, this palette, and I did explain this in the first video I did, this palette is all about mixing and matching and using even a mixing board or the back of your hand to mix some of these shades together. That's the whole point of the palette, which I do explain in the other video, but I just was tempted to check it out. Okay, so let's see. So that's what that looks like. This is in the new palette that I just got, the medium, new to me, I should say. And then let me go in to the first one and let's compare much lighter so we have a lighter highlight and a lighter balm and then a slightly deeper highlight and a slightly deeper balm which is better for my skin tone this is cooler this is warmer so maybe it's less of a of a skin a skin maybe under undertone like I'm neutral maybe a bit warm leaning okay uh interesting so again this is all about mixing and we'll play with it if you don't know i do have a first video that explains samantha ravendell's concept a little bit more with this mirage shift palette the concept is to be able to make any number of looks and shades by mixing um, and i have a little tool here that we're gonna dig some of the pigment out and play a little bit with it a little bit later another reason my face is mixed mat is mismatched but let's go outside and take a look at these shades the new shades i bought in the warm california sunshine we have that ysl inks vinyl cream in chili provocation followed by the mirage shift the auric mirage shift in this time high noon daybreak i have in another video and then our armani luminous silk aqua highlighter this time in the sunrise shade number four not the quite the darkest maybe i should have done that i don't know all right, uh, we are now going to go ahead and go to the playtime, which is our demo. And I'm going to try to play with all of these things. And I would love your feedback. And I would love to hear what you think. And I want to know what shades that you purchase in makeup make you curious about trying more shades. What product, I should say, make you curious to go on a journey and look at other shades that they make. And has that been successful for you or not? Make sure that you're subscribed and let's go around and play during the day. Okay, I'm trying to kind of figure out the best order to do this in. I've technically got two items we're going to use as bronzers. So, well, that's why the Mother Nature or the Good Lord Above or whatever you believe in gave us two sides of the face for comparison, maybe? I don't know. Uh, let, you know what? Let's do the lipstick first. Why not? Let's see. Which one? Okay, here's that chili shade. Let's try it. I have not tried this yet. I think I'm supposed to shake it up. Am I supposed to shake this one? I can't remember. Maybe that's just liquid. Okay, well, we did it just in case. We did a preemptive. Uh, uh, I really love that. Okay, let me clean it up a little bit here. I have a a little makeup eraser towel on my lap. That's why I'm going like that. <laughs> okay, what do you guys think? 
Now, one thing I always say is that if you want to really test a lipstick or a lip, you know, any sort of lip treatment or anything, you got to do it in a darker color. Like the light pinks and the nude shades, I love them. But they don't really tell you the capability or lack thereof of a lip stain or a lipstick. So now this is really pretty, many, pretty much one of the darker shades. I do have a little bit of separation here. Let's try to take care of it. A little bit fussier. Uh, like to me, even the most comfortable lipstick, the minute you get it in red, you're kind of like asking for trouble. And some people don't mind the whole application process. I do. <laughs> I, I think it's just because I'm not a talented person. Like, you know, I will volunteer for things like my daughter's a big tennis player and they have a banquet coming up. And I'm like, put me in anything that's not artistic. Do you know what I mean? Like, any, I have to make wreaths or I have to make what? what? No. no. Have me organize things. Don't have me do anything that could need any sort of a technique. Let me see. That's not bad though. All right. Okay. Now people have asked me how this lasts and I've worn the darker kind of mauve or plum shade um, and it, it does last pretty well. Now there's nothing about this that is a, um, it isn't supposed to be wiped off. Remember a lot of those that you had where you shake them and they're shiny and then you blot them off like Rare Beauty had one. Um, it's not like that. And it isn't a lip stain that just kind of goes on and dries and doesn't move. And it, it doesn't pretend to be, like if I kiss the back of my hand, you are gonna see a little bit of a mark. So this will stay through eating, so to speak, but it's not really its claim to fame. It is very long lasting. And I am not necessarily one to speak to that because I am a lip licker and a lip smacker. I tend to do this. Why do I do that throughout the day? I don't know. I used to be addicted to lip balm. I think I like the feeling of having something um, emollient on my lips. It's also kind of a habit that I wish I wouldn't do, frankly. I maybe should work on that. Um, so lipstick doesn't last that long on me because I'm hard on it. You know, when you're doing this all the time, you're I'm just always worried about what it will look like. I don't want to walk to a mirror and have lipstick on my teeth. Or this is why I'm going on this red lip, lip journey. Um, and actually ordering this shade was kind of part of that journey. I'm just trying to find reds that will work for me and that I can work with. But maybe if I also amend my behavior a little bit, that would help, to be honest with you, you know? Um, but that's really pretty. And um, on me, it'll last quite a few hours. If you are not a lip licker, lip smacker, lip rubber, <laughs> um, it will last um, pretty much most of the day on you. So, and it feels like an oil, but it kind of looks like a stain. I don't, I'm really a fan of the product. So we'll see what I think of this lip. It looks a little crooked in my application. Maybe I'm just crooked lipped. I'm too afraid to have filler. Okay. Let's talk about, we got, we got two things to look at here. I got the second shade, as you know, of the Mirage Shift. This is now High Noon, um, and it has a bronzer in it. So let's just do a bronzer comparison because I've decided to, as you know, pick up this Armani and see how the bronzer. So let's go just one side of the face and one side of the face on the bronzer, and then we'll use the rest of the Auric palette. So I brought over two, because I own two of them, of these Charlotte Tilbury bronzer brushes, which you know are my favorite for liquid and cream bronzer. Let's just try this. Oh, it's chilly. Um, not going to do anything really special with it. Let's just try it to bronze around my face. That is the number four shade. Uh, I decided not to go with the copper shade. I decided to go more with this kind of deeper. I do think this bronzes, guys. What do you think? Okay, that's one side of the face um, very lightly. I do think that gave some nice color to my face. What do you think? To Just this side. Yeah, I'm glad I got that. I like Armani liquid products. Let's do a little more. It was silly. I did it in the video. If you saw my video when I first got this, I did it with the rose gold version of this. And I mean, it was pretty and all that, but it, it just kind of looked like rose gold highlighter around the out, uh, the perimeter of my fa perimeter of my face. Um, I think this works much better as a bronzer for those of us with all the way up to medium skin tone. 
I would think. Obviously, you know, skin tone dependent, obviously. But I do think that works. Yeah, that's pretty. And it's really kind of gentle. I like it. All right, I'm only going to do that side of the face. Normally, I would pair it with the kind of rose gold as a highlight. Wouldn't that be pretty together? But that we already reviewed that as a highlight. So let's go to Auric, which also has a highlighter. Okay, first things first, I'm going to use my other, you saw I had two, uh, Charlotte Tilbury. Let's bronze with this one. I bronzed with the first um, with the Daybreak, and it worked. This is going to be a bit darker. Let's see what we think getting it up there into the hairline. So there's a new palette coming out really soon by Viseart, which I'm really interested in. And it has like hairline, uh, has cream. It's like a bronzer and for hairline use. And I'm curious, I guess it's like to fill in any little areas that look like they don't have a lot of hair in them. I don't know. Let's make this a little darker. I was afraid when I first did it, I'm filling up the brush there. And onto the cheek, what do you think? Uh, they're mismatched. But I think both work very nicely as a bronzer. And I do appreciate the bronzer here in the high noon a little over Daybreak. Daybreak was a little light for me. And um, when you see both sides of my face, this side is a little bit more bronzed. That's okay. It's a duality and that's fine. All right, I brought over a bunch of, I have two of the Charlotte Tilbury brushes, but I also bought, brought over a bunch of my Merit One brushes. I do enjoy those very, very much. So let's see what we can get now, putting this on. Let's try the blush just as it is. As it is, that means no mixing yet. Oh, that's really pretty. I had stayed away from this one when I first saw this palette because I thought it would be too orange uh, for me, but I tend to look good in oranges and it works with this red lipstick because this kind of chilly shade in the YSL is a warm orangey red. Uh, so I thought this would kind of go together well in this video as a look. I'm actually filming a Merit video soon, so I just kind of had the realization that I don't want to dirty all my Merit brushes because they won't be dry. Okay. Yeah, we got some good savings in Merit coming up. It's their only sale of the year. So I'm going to be talking about that, but I need some clean Merit brushes, so I can't use all of them for this video. Oh, no. Okay, and I'm going to take this Sonia G brush here, and I'm going to go into the cream bronzer and use it on the eye. Uh, as I told you, uh, Samantha Ravendell calls this a face palette, and I'm going to therefore use it on my whole face. And I actually like the look of that a lot. So we're going to put the bronzer as a kind of matte crease shade, and then the blush as a sort of, you know, mobile lid shade. This will also tie the look together, and I think the lipstick works with it as well. I'm sure you'd agree. Because the lipstick is, again, that kind of chilly red shade. I almost feel like I need to put on another layer of the lip. Like it's kind of looking a bit too sheer. So let's do that. Let's stop and do that for a moment. And then we're going to put on the rest of uh, this arc. Then we're going to play with the highlight, really. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, that's better. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm going to do the highlight with my fingers. And again, we haven't mixed anything yet. I did bring over a little spatula, care of Tatcha, uh, so that we can, uh, <laughs> from all the little Tatcha lip products I've had. Or Okay. Yeah, you know, this palette is most definitely a little bit warmer and a little bit more orange than the original Daylight one, Day Break one that I purchased. And I love them both, but this one I think suits my coloring a little bit better, frankly. And again, if you're seeing this side is a little bit more bronze, do remember that I have that lighter Armani uh, as a bronzer on this side. So that's, that's the difference. Okay, now let's work with some of our mixing. Because I got this here. Main thing first is I want to play um, with this little, let me use my cloth here, okay, with this. This is our kind of our mixing balm, and I want to try to put that a little bit on top of what we got going on this side. This will make it a little bit more of a highlighter, a little bit more glowy. Let's just do that on this side. And then on this side here, let's go ahead and mix a little bit. So I'm going to go in here. I, I, I just don't, I hesitate to scrape too much. I don't want to create havoc in my palette. 
palette havoc. But I did scrape there, put a little bit on my hand. Sorry, that, that was a mess there. And now I'm going to scrape a little bit of this balm and just kind of mix them together there. Now you can do this, and of course Oryx sells, Oryx sells the, um, the product. Oryx sells the mixing little plate that you can mix with. I think it's on sale right now. Uh, there it is mixed, and I used it kind of as a blush topper. I could have used a brush, but now I'm panicking that I won't have any clean Mary brushes. <laughs> Still gotta run a business, you know what I'm saying? Okay, so interestingly enough, here is the side where I put on the blush part of it, and then kind of put a highlighter and even a balm over it. And it is a difference from this side where I then mixed the blush with the balm and put them on together. This is the kind of experimenting I did in the first video with the lighter palette. Um, and you know what? I really like, because it's not even accentuating pores, I really like the look of that kind of glowy blush, of mixing the blush with the balm. And I'm going to take, I didn't do this in the first video, but I'm going to do it in this one. I'm going to take some of that balm and just put a little bit of it on uh, the eye. Just a little bit. I was afraid it would crease, but I'm going to make sure that I put it where it wouldn't crease. I'm going to kind of rub it in a little bit. And I don't think it will crease, um, maybe if I mixed it with color. Again, the sky is the limit with this palette, and I did a lot of that experimentation with the Daybreak uh, shades that are a little bit lighter. But that is, I really, really, I gotta tell you, I really love that I borrowed this little tool from a Tatcha lip product. Was it Tatcha? Yeah, it was either Tatcha or Laneige. I think that's Tatcha, um, and scraped a little out and mixed that on my hand like that. Um, I love that. I think that's really pretty, those two mixed together. And, and I think that's the whole idea of this palette. I tend to get a bit boring and just use colors as they are, but everything you mix in. If you have a deeper skin tone and you wanted to even try this as a blush, you could deepen these two together and then maybe add a little bit of the balm. So then you have a deeper blush, because that even can go red, if you have a deep skin tone, I'm thinking, if a deeper blush, and then you can have that kind of shine to it. Or you can add the highlight and that highlight and bronzer. Really, the sky's the limit, but my favorite is the balm mixed with the blush. I think that's really pretty. So yeah, a win-win. Um, what am I thinking of this shade? Let's do a little bit of a kind of final thoughts here. Win-win on this. You have to look good in warm shades for this. If not, the first palette um, is works well with lighter skin tones and cooler shades, which a lot of lighter skin tones um, go for the cooler shade. My viewers that tell me they have deeper skin tones and a cool undertone have more trouble finding things for themselves. Um, so you can comment down below if that's been your experience. Um, let's talk about the YSL. I like it better in the plum. This one is a bit fussier but it definitely works. And I am going to do a video on my whole red lip journey and my red lip era that I'm in right now. Um, and we'll talk about this one again. I don't think it's gonna be my favorite red, a tad bit fussy, tad bit orange. I kind of like a more true red, pulling a little bit cooler than this, um, but you can tell me what you think of it on me. Um, and this would be an absolutely fantastic bronzer, and it is showcased on this side of my face. I just like the Armani liquids. I think they're really easy to work with. I think that of their blush as well. Um, or, and, and their uh, liquid eyeshadow. The Armani makes a great liquid. Who'd have thunk it? They don't advertise it very well. They're kind of talk about quiet luxury. Um, and I think they just have a great liquid product. And this would just be really fun to just bring on a trip or something. I mean, it just works so quickly and blends so easily. And as usual, I will link this brush from Charlotte Tilbury because I just think it's great with liquid and cream bronzer. I just think it really does the trick. I haven't found one better. And you know I'm a brush snob. So... There you go. There are my thoughts there. What do you guys think? Uh, it's not just about me yammering. What What have you, here's a great question. What have you as a, as a beauty community liked so much that you thought you would actually try it in more shades? And when you did, were you happy? Were you disappointed? Share your stories. Um, I like to hear them and I know the community likes to hear them as well. Um, that's what we're about here is community. Make sure that you subscribe as that is the kindest thing that you can do for me. Look down below for information on where to find all these products and where available up here on the screen in YouTube shopping. Join us over on Facebook. 
The link is down below. Join us here on our membership on YouTube. Link is down below. Look to give super thanks and come join me on Instagram, TikTok, threads. All that info is down there. Make sure you subscribe. It's the kindest thing you can do for me. And I will see all of you in the next video. Bye-bye.